The following story uses words that some may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Gert van Ruyen, born 1937, was a South African predator and serial on a liver who allegedly took the lives of at least six girls aged between 9 and 16, between 1988 and 1989. His first crimes consisted of minor felonies and thefts before he was sent to a reform school in 1954 for stealing a car that he drove from Cape Town to Pretoria to visit his old mother. Van Ruyen seemed to have a pretty simple life from the outside, looking in, but it was far from that. In 1979, he abducted two girls, aged 10 and 13, taking them to the Hartabees Port Dam, where he took advantage of the victims before releasing the girls in Pretoria the following day. He was however, caught and sentenced to only four years imprisonment, before being released. In August 1983, he and his wife, divorced, and by 1988, he started dating divorcee, Joey Harhoff, who became his alleged accomplice. Van Ruyen is thought to have used Harhoff as a friendly face, able to gain the trust of victims. Children's Homes reported that she requested homing girls for the holidays and applied to foster children, but fortunately, the application was turned down. On August 1, 1988, 14-year-old Tracy Lee Scott Crossley disappeared. She was seen by witnesses getting into a Volkswagen Beetle outside of the shopping mall in Cresta. On December 22, 1988, 12-year-old Fiona Harvey disappeared after a white Ford Bantam pickup truck picked her up. This particular truck had the contracting business that Gert was involved with on the truck, linking him to this crime. This would only be the beginning of multiple victims never to be seen again. On June 7, 1989, 12-year-old Joan Horn disappeared. On September 22, 1989, 11-year-old Odette Boucher and 12-year-old Anne-Marie Wappenaar disappeared. On November 3, 1989, 13-year-old Yolanda Wessels, the niece of Van Ruyen's partner disappeared. On January 11, 1990, 16-year-old Joan Boyson was abducted in Church Square, Pretoria and taken to Van Ruyen's home on Malherby Street. Boyson was handcuffed, drugged and taken advantage of before being locked inside a cupboard. Luckily, Joan managed to escape and alert the police. The police placed Van Ruyen's home under surveillance for four days before identifying him when he drove past his house. Realizing that the police are aware of his wrongdoings, a pursuit ensued. Van Ruyen took the life of Harhoff before taking his own on the Apes River Bridge. Unfortunately, to this day, the victims of Van Ruyen have never been found, and there are multiple theories. Some believe that they were unalived and buried, while others think that they might have been trafficked. This case will remain one of the worst cases in South African history, and I really hope that one day, the missing will be found so that their families could finally get the answers they need.